Personal Capital is the granddaddy of automated net worth tracking services. For me, it was the gateway for my own familiarity with net worth and the way that I tracked it for years. I think paying attention to our net worth and our finances was instrumental in us taking steps closer and closer towards financial freedom. But is personal capital still as impactful today in 2021 or 2022 as it was several years ago when I started using it? Eh, maybe. Let's talk about personal capital, its features, its pros and cons, and whether or not it's the right place for you to track and manage your money. So what is personal capital anyway? What kind of tools are we talking about? It's an account aggregator and visualizer. It's a net worth tracker. It's a budget tool. It's a retirement planner. It has a fee analyzer. It's its own investing service all in and of itself. And they have a checking account. That's a lot of stuff. And most of it is free. It really is pretty incredible, all the things that they offer. Overall, the way that their service provides any kind of info to you is you link your respective accounts to personal capital. So that means that you open up personal capital and you start an account, which is totally for free. And then you input your login data for your banks and credit cards and your debt and everything kind of that you want to track. And then it will compile all that info together for you. And through those free tools, display all this information in a really cool way. When you first open personal capital, it's a net worth visualizer. So it says, hey, these are all of the positive money things in your life and they're worth this much. And then we're going to subtract out all the negative money things like your debt, your mortgage, that kind of stuff. And we're going to compile those two together to give you your net worth number. Now, I just recently made a video all about net worth and how I think it's the number one most important number that you can track in your personal finance journey. So for them to give you just this free tool alone is pretty awesome. They have this way of displaying your information both in detail and overall simultaneously so you can know exactly what's going on. You can even tap into that respective account and see like all the transactions and things that have happened. But they also just tell you this 30,000 foot view of like, hey, over the last 90 days, over the last year or five years, this is what's happened with your net worth. And it's super cool to have that perspective. You also just have like a massive transaction window that you can open up. And so you can just scroll through all of the transactions related to any of the accounts you have linked. This is super handy if you have something in particular that you're trying to track down and figure out like what happened? What about that one thing that we bought? Or when did we buy that thing? Just type it in the little search function. When did I go to QT last and fill up with gas? Boom, all the QTs come up. It's pretty handy. They also have a cash flow visualizer. And so it's kind of like them trying to do a little bit of that budgeting work for you to say, hey, this is how much your income has been. This is how much your expenses have been and give you that in kind of a nice chart. I've never really used that myself, but it's a totally free feature that they offer. Of course, whenever they have all your data, they can put together a budgeting tool for you. So you can set up your own parameters and say, I only want to spend this much on food, this much on rent, this much on insurance and clothes and whatever else you're spending money on. And then you can track what your plan is versus what reality is with their budget tool. Again, totally for free. Then obviously a lot of the focus with personal capital is around investing. And so they have one whole tab in the app called portfolio. So it's showing you the breakdown by account of how much money you have overall invested. Like it'll say, oh, you have 25% of all your invested money in your 401k and 25% in your Roth IRA and the other 50% in your brokerage or whatever your breakdown is. And it's a really easy kind of visualizer to see that. And again, with all this stuff, you can just click into that account then and it'll show you your return. It'll show you recent transactions. It's like this really easy way to dive deep if you want, which I just love because I'm a nerd like that. Then this is a really powerful tool. So up until now, all that's been good, but you could totally replicate it easily on a spreadsheet. This this next tool is really, really cool. What it is, is a way for you to measure your own return based on your investment choices versus other popular investments. So they call it a U index because what I've invested in through different index funds and a few individual stocks and my wife's 401k and mine and all these different things is this unique mix. It's not just as simple as, oh, this one index fund. So it's kind of difficult for you to know your overall return. They put all of that together for you in one number, in one chart, it's super cool. And then if you really wanna play the comparison, game, you can say select comparison and pick something else to compare the U index against. So let's say me versus S&P 500. Over the last 90 days, I've gotten 3.31% returns. The S&P 500 has gotten 4.78% returns. So it tells me that I'm not investing as well as the S&P 500, basically. Or am I? There's some caveats to all this that I'll get to in a minute whenever I get to the cons list. They also offer an investment checkup tab. And so it will kind of go through your investments for you and make suggestions and inferences like your asset allocation. They'll analyze the stocks you've picked, like individual stocks. And as part of, like I mentioned before, the fee analyzer, they'll talk about the costs of associated with how you're investing. So if you're particularly picking like very high fee funds, then they'll point that out to you and go, hey, maybe 
you could invest in this other fund that's similar to the one you picked, just with less fees, which almost instantaneously then boosts your return. This next tool is really incredible. It's called financial planning. And what it's doing is taking your overall situation in life, like your age, your projected social security, your income, how much money you think you'll need in retirement, when you'll retire, and it compiles all that information together to then give you this data, this kind of feedback, this score. So the first one is called Retirement Planner. It shows you what your age is, when you'll probably retire based on what you've told it. And then it'll run all these different simulations to say, hey, if you're in like the worst case scenario, this is probably about how much money you would have once you retire. If you have kind of a normal scenario, then this is how much money you'll have when you retire. And so it's able to run all those different simulations based on what it knows because you've fed it all this data in linking your account. So now it can use that data to help you to figure out, do I have enough invested or not? How am I doing here? And this kind of analysis, I think, is a lot better than whenever we just pick a single number and try and say, oh yeah, I need a million five to retire, or I need however much to retire, because that's just one point in time. That's one number. And so what they're doing by running these different simulations and giving you this kind of wave of a chart is saying somewhere in this range is probably where you'll end up. But to me, that's a lot wiser than saying, oh, one number, then we'll be fine because everything will be fine. It's saying there's a real chance here of things performing badly in the future. And if they do, this is what that means for you. Is that okay with you or not? And then you get to decide the kind of actions you want to take. You can also set up a retirement savings goal for the year and say, hey, this year I want to save X dollars and then it'll go ahead and track that for you. And it'll even give you like a recommended range based on the other information you've given it. It's very handy. I like it. It's got an emergency fund feature to help you to stay on track keeping an emergency fund around, which is always a good idea. I made a video about that too. And they have a dedicated tab towards debt pay down, which this is kind of buried in the bottom of the app, but I think this should be more of front and center because this is actually really critical for us to get financial independence. My little chart here is slowly, slowly going down over time. And then of course we bought a new car, so then it shot back up again and <laughs> it makes me look bad here. And of course at the very bottom, there's a financial advisor tab so that you can contact them directly. You can give them your money to invest for you and then they can make some healthy fees. Let's talk about the pros of personal capital here briefly. I've kind of alluded to them already in going over the features, but obviously there's a lot of free features. I mean, that is a ton of value that they're offering us completely for free. And that is really valuable to our life because for us to build those tools, it would take many, 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 many hours and we'd be wasting all this time and we'd probably do it wrong and it wouldn't be as pretty or as useful as that. That's incredibly useful. The design is really slick. It's really easy to use. Another pro is that you get 20 bucks for signing up. If anybody refers anybody to personal capital, they both get 20 bucks. So that's kind of nice, especially since their stuff is free to use. And both the mobile and the desktop views work really well. A lot of times different services are clearly built for one or the other, but personal capital just does both super cleanly. I love it. All right, the section you've been waiting for, what are the cons of personal capital? Something that I see as a con that maybe other people don't is their constant upselling for their investment services. I realize they've got to make money and I realize that for them to provide provide free services, they've got to generate income from somewhere, but it does feel a little bit heavy handed, both in the app, because the app will use its data to say, hey, maybe you should invest differently over here. Why don't you call us? Or they'll just call you. Like I've gotten numerous calls from personal capital trying to get me to start investing with them. And maybe you're thinking, Brendan, that's fine. Who cares? Just invest with them or don't or whatever. But like, what's the problem with them trying to upsell you? Well, my problem then is the actual investing service itself. For one thing, they're super high investment minimums. So if you don't have $100,000 that you can transfer and invest with them, don't even think about it. They won't talk to you. Don't waste their time. So if you have like $100,000 in your 401k at work, you can't really transfer that over to them because it's tied to your work and it's tied to the company that your work chose. So you have to have a hundred grand minimum in your own accounts that you could then transfer to them. So that disqualifies most people right there. But even if it was a low minimum, their fees are really high. They're scratching at the door of 1% fees for their active managers. But for those of you with over $10 million to invest, the fees drop down to 0.49%. Even even then, those are high fees. Like these are fees that we're paying over and above the funds that we're investing in or anything else. These are fees all on top of that. And it's it's pretty counterintuitive unless you do the math, unless you get like on a calculator online, because it seems like 0.4%, like that's a very small number. How can that be that big of a deal? Wouldn't it be worth it if this professional advisor person could help me get better returns overall? It's really incredible how much 
fees eat into our investment returns, and it's way more than 0.49%. If you do the math, it's crazy. And the real kicker here is that by the numbers, almost all people who are active managers, who are the people who are picking investments for you, these kinds of investment advisors, do a worse job than a passively indexed investment fund. That's totally counterintuitive, right? It would be like saying, I want a new awesome car, and I don't just want a new Mustang GT. I want more. I want better, and I'm willing to pay more. So you pay for the price of a new Lamborghini Huracan STO, but then whenever you see your investment returns, it's the equivalent of a 1999 Hyundai Accent. Ugh, it kind of makes me sick to think about. Like we are paying multiple, multiple times more money to get a worse product. That's the equivalent here. That's what I'm trying to say. Then my third and biggest con are the account linking problems. Like I mentioned, I've been using personal capital for years and there's always been like small little problems here and there. Like I felt that every now and then something would come unglued, but then it would a lot of times fix itself. It would become re-glued. It would relink. Cool. No problem. But as time has gone on, I'm convinced that this problem has gotten worse and worse. I could be a little bit jaded because I now have so many accounts that could become unlinked that maybe it's my perception, but I also think that objectively they have more problems on their own. Like without my input and without me changing passwords or adding a bunch of new accounts or anything like that, things just are constantly unlinking. It's a perpetual thing now. So for me to go in there and actually use the service, I've got to spend a whole bunch of time re-logging in and then it'll be linked for a day or two and I'll come back and check, but unlinked again. And it's like, what happened guys? I just fixed this. How is it unlinked again? And the accounts being linked to personal capital is the beating heart of this whole system. It's what feeds the data to personal capital so that you can use all those really handy, awesome tools. If you don't have the data, the tools are worthless because it's old, outdated, stagnant data. It's either got to be on time and right or not at all. So now that we've acknowledged the pros and cons, is personal capital still a great way for you to invest and track and manage your money now? I doubt it. I'm not convinced that for most people, this is the best way. For me, the high minimum balance requirements and the high fees are disqualifiers for using personal capital as an investment service because anybody can choose something like a free account, pick something like a three fund portfolio and net more gains in the end. So the investing service to me isn't worth it. Then you're left with this whole slew of powerful and free features. Are those worth it? Maybe. Part of my problem overall, though, is that I'm just torn because I wish that there was a really clear alternative. The fact that there are these account linking problems, I'm assuming could be a part of just the system right now. Like this is what it means for the financial system and for us to have the kind of security that we need with two-factor authentication, with not necessarily saving all of our passwords all the time to whatever device we're on, because that's not as secure as if we don't save them. Like if we have those kind of things in place, if we change our passwords every now and then, any service that aggregates our accounts together, tries to put all that data together for us, is going to have the same kind of issues, I would think. Wouldn't Mint and you need a budget and personal capital and anybody else have the same kind of challenges? I've used most of those kind of services before, and I would think that it would be the same exact thing. Perhaps if you're somebody that only has a few accounts, but you want access to these tools, it could still be really good for you. There's not that much to track and maintain and make sure it's linked well. Like, it's pretty simple. So you could have access to all those free tools and use them and really enjoy it. If you're that person, I would totally check it out. For those of us who are gluttons for punishment like me, who have way too many accounts, we have that many more things to go wrong and maintain and tend to like a weed infested garden or like my overgrown backyard. <laughs> So is it worth going through the trouble of all this or should we just do this kind of thing manually? I genuinely love a spreadsheet. I would love to lay down at night and check my spreadsheets before I go to bed. I do that. You can ask my wife. I have them for budgets and net worth tracking and goals and running tracking. Even though I enjoy it so much and I lean towards just going ahead and taking on all this manually, it just takes a little bit more time than I'm willing to spend. For those of us that have a lot of accounts, like here, for example, to make this video, I decided I would update our net worth tracker with all of our investment accounts only. So it's not our total net worth, it's just our investment accounts. Guess how many we have? Five? More. 15? More. <laughs> We have 18, 18 different investing accounts. So I'm guessing by the time we put mortgage, bank, credit card, loans, you know, everything else all in there together, we probably have over 30 accounts. So I just updated the investing ones only and it took me 22 minutes to log in, get the current balance, slap it in the spreadsheet, go through, do that 18 times. It took me 22 minutes. It's not terrible, but personal capital used to take like 15 seconds. You'd log in, it would load, boom, done. 
So I miss that. I miss that kind of efficiency. I'm realizing as I'm here talking with you that maybe there's a mix of those two because even though I'm fairly confident in the spreadsheets that I make and they're pretty simple, like let me be clear, I'm not like one of these people that does Excel competitions or anything crazy like that. Like these are very simple sort of charts and tables that I'm doing, but it's manual and it's limited by what I'm willing to build. There could be a middle ground here because I don't necessarily want to leave the front door open and unlocked for personal capital. When it comes to security, like I want to keep on two-factor authentication. I want to be able to change my login whenever I need to. Like I want that kind of security, but I also want their tools or at least most of their tools. So I wonder if the middle ground would be to keep using personal capital, but just manually update the account balances in there. It would still probably be able to project in the future and do the retirement planning things. I would hope it would probably still be able to do everything net worth related. I guess I just wonder if it can do the calculation for the return as well, because it might not necessarily know the difference between what you've contributed and what's a return. So it might then do the math wrong and give you like really crazy numbers as a return, because unless you can somehow categorize it as a deposit, then maybe it'll think it's just an investment return when really you're like shoveling in 500 bucks a month or something like that. I don't know. I'm not totally sure what to do with that one. I already have actually like a third of our accounts in personal capital are just manual because they either don't link like the institution that we have the account with isn't part of the network that personal capital has access to, or I just had so many problems linking it that I gave up and switched over to a manual one. So I'm doing this already, but I didn't think about the potential like miscommunication and miscalculation of returns in there. I'll bet we could still have access to most of the features though. Well, as much as I'd like to know what the perfect solution is, I'm not sure I do. In this particular instance, personal capital is so great for the right person, just not for everyone. As time goes on, I think it's less and less perfect for me. And in a way, I'm probably squarely in the sights of their target demographic. But the fact that I have so many accounts and want to check it all the time means that I'm also kind of disqualifying myself. If it does work for you, or even if you're intrigued, like I said, it's almost completely free. So there's nothing wrong with checking it out, downloading it, linking a few accounts if you want to see, or you can just download it and look at it. Don't feel like pressured to link your accounts if you feel like that's a security breach for you. But it's very cool and very handy if it does work for you. And honestly, if you know of a net worth tracking tool or some other kind of free personal finance tool that I should know about and I should check out, then let me know because I would love to see if there's something else that works really well for this, that's secure, that has a lot of cool free features. Like that would be amazing. So let me know in a comment. In the meantime, if you want to start tracking your net worth manually, but are kind of having a little bit of a hard time getting started, I made an entire video with my net worth tracker, kind of how to build it and how to use it all in one video. And so that'll walk you through. If you want to build one yourself, you can. And trust me, it sounds like it would be complicated in like an hour long video step by step, but it's actually pretty short. Hey, you've watched till the end of the video. And for fun, I like to have a secret comment section for those of us that make it this far. Today, the secret comment word is pause. Hear me out. It's not like pausing a video. If you were looking for an animal outdoors, how would you find them? How would you track them? Like we're tracking our net worth with their paw prints, animal paw prints. We're talking about tracking your money here. So there you go. Track your money, track the paw prints. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned something new about net worth or personal capital or something else, then include like a little paw emoji or mention something about paws. I'll keep an eye out for these comments because they are by far my favorites. If you'd like to know more about a similar topic, I recommend watching my average American net worth video. It's a recent one. I think it's pretty good and I've linked it in the description and I'll put it up right here so that you can check it out. All right. See you next time.